All right, let's keep talking about this IRS scandal. We are joined by Republican Congressman Tom Graves of Georgia. Congressman Graves questioned IRS Commissioner Douglas Shulman back in March of 2012 about these very allegations. Shulman denied any wrongdoing, and now, of course, reports coming out that senior officials at the IRS knew that these conservative groups were being targeted as early as August 2011. So the question, I guess, sir, is who knew what, when, how? I mean, did you believe uh, Mr. Shulman? Be I, you know, I've talked to him in the past reporting on tax stories. It's hard for me to believe that the guy up top doesn't know what's going on. <laughs> that's, that's a good point. You would think that if your senior aides or advisors or staff knew of this seven months prior to being asked the question, he would know that as well. Now, when he, when he you know, offers assurances that no, in fact, this is not occurring. You sort of have to take his word for it. That's all you can do. But in fact, this report now coming out is shedding light on what we suspected was going on. And, uh, and the question today is, did he lie intentionally? And who made the order? Who made the call? And that's what the American people are really frustrated about right now is that the power of this government is being used against political opponents. And what involvement did the administration have or not have in this? So those are the questions that we'll be looking for in the days ahead. Congressman Graves, uh, using the IRS as a political weapon, certainly nothing new, goes back, in fact, you could argue all the way back to FDR, Kennedy, Nixon, and so on. It may be unconstitutional, but it's probably not criminal. What kind of remedy would you like to see in this case, depending on what it reveals? Well, first of all, if there were criminal acts, they need to be held responsible. We all know that. We agree with that. The president has said if something happened, then it's outrageous and there will be a, uh, a responsibility will be taken for it. Well, it's not a question of if. It was admitted to and an apology was given last week. So something did obviously occur. So what can happen in the, in, in the days ahead? One, I don't know why no one has been let go. There's been, no one has been fired. No termination has occurred. The same people who did this over the last two and three years are still in place today with the exception of the commissioner himself who resigned last right. November. So it's a matter of cleaning out the IRS and restoring the public trust for the American people. But, you know, and our very own Liz McDonald has done so much research on this, and she makes such a valid point that it's the only agency where you're guilty first until you're proven innocent. The IRS has so much power. Even though it is an administrative mess, it has so much power. Is that part of the problem? No, oh, that's, a, that's a huge part of the problem, and, and, and they're exactly right in how it's portrayed. If you were to receive an envelope from the IRS in the mail today, you're, yep. you're, absolutely, you're, you're guilty until you prove your own innocence. So true. Probably the solution to this is those who were applying for these statuses, who love their country, teaching the Constitution, maybe put some of them in charge of the IRS, and then there would be more fairness and the democracy could be restored and trust put back in place. So I think it's a matter of just cleaning house, starting over. But the question is, who made the call? Who was responsible? This is so reminiscent of the 1970s with yep. Richard Nixon yep. using his power and his influence and his subordinates to punish his political opponents. Congressman Graves, I apologize. We've had so much breaking news. We're out of time, but please keep up the good fight down there. Thank you. Thanks for having me. Thank you. All right. There